Who are the worst heroes? Well, that can be a tough question to answer. Worst in what measure? Who's the worst depending on who's playing it? At what level of play? Is it competitive or casual? There's a lot of factors that go into whether or not you're going to deem characters as the worst. The factors we'll be using in today's video is competitive play. This list is based on the recent PC professional tournament hero usage and playtime. So what this means is at the highest level of play, how often were heroes picked? The five on this list were five of the worst. Your experiences on the ladder and quick player competitive may vary wildly, but at the highest level of play, here are the five worst heroes. Want to give a big shout out to Captain Planet of Overbuff.com. He is the gentleman who compiled all of this data and shares it with the community. If it weren't for him, I wouldn't know any of this. I also want to mention that this is in no particular order. These are just five heroes that were at the bottom of the barrel. Let's go ahead and get things started with number five, Mr. Junkrat. He's not bad, really. He's got great area denial. He can slow the payload pushes or force a team off of the point, especially useful in King of the Hill. But he is made bad when the enemy team has a Zarya. And there is always a Zarya. Junkrat inadvertently just ends up giving Zarya 100% charge for most of the game. He's also becoming especially ineffective in this rising tank and healer heavy meta, as he just ends up damaging the tanks without killing them, and as as such fueling Anna's ultimate charges as she quickly heals them back up. And while on the ladder you may be able to set up those cheeky trap and mine ambushes one-shotting any 200 health heroes, this almost never works at high level play. And his ultimate, it's loud and it's easy to shoot down for people who can aim. Moving on to number 4, we have got Soldier 76, and like Junkrat, he himself is not a bad hero. He's just not better than his alternatives, and in this case, that would be McCree. At the moment, there's there's almost no reason to take 76 over McCree for one of your few DPS spots. 76 fills the role of doing hit scan damage at medium range. However, his hit scan damage is sustained rather than bursty. Sustained damage does little more than fuel the enemy alts. You need quick burst of damage to secure kills, and that's where McCree comes in. Yes, 76 does have his helix rockets for burst damage, but that is once every 8 seconds, whereas McCree, he's burst all the time. Now moving Moving on to number three, it's Torbjorn, the fueler of nightmares. His turret can be a terror at many levels of play, except for the pro scene. It never lasts for more than a few seconds. It is far too easy to kill, and it's stationary, which is a big problem. While his weapon does solid damage, it's too inconsistent at medium to long range. So, if you're, say, defending a point and you have good aim, it's often better to just take McCree. You don't need something to do the shooting for you when you can shoot yourself. But for of course, you may argue, there's technically two guns if you count the turret plus the rivet gun. Yes, there's two, but those are two mediocre guns when you can instead take one really strong gun. Coming in at number two is Symmetra, an incredibly specialized hero, notably being strong at point A defense. The enemy is coming towards you, which allows you to make maximum use of your zoning as well as your, your turrets. And then, of course, your teleporter can quickly get a dead team back to defend the point. However, even on point A defense, why not just take another hero? Let's be honest here, her turrets have little to no impact, and they're not going to kill anybody. All they tend to do is act as a sentry, telling your team where the enemy is, but pro players tend to already know at all times where the enemy team is. Her zone damage is far too inconsistent with the slow moving speed of the orbs, making them easy to dodge, and the main reason to take her, which is of course her teleporter, never ever gets full use. Pro players know the maps inside and out, as I'm sure many of you also do. So there's absolutely no place where you could hide the teleporter that the enemy tracer or Genji won't find in a matter of seconds. You'll be lucky if you get off a single teleport, which is why Symmetra is basically worthless. Take literally any other hero. And then finally on our list of five worst heroes in Overwatch competitive, it is Bastion. He can be great for a bit of surprise damage, especially at melting tanks. But beyond that initial surprise, he becomes quite worthless. Yes, you may get off one or two kills before the enemy knows that you have a Bastion, but then they will switch to one of Bastion's numerous counters, and that's that. Similar to Torbjorn and his turret, Bastion gets a lot of his strength while being immobile, and anything immobile in this game is doomed to fail. It's too easy to play around, and it's too easy to kill. Farah, Junkrat, Hanzo, Widow, Tracer, Genji, Roadhog, the list goes on when it comes to Bastion's counters. Yes, he can absolutely dominate matches when players don't know how to deal with him, but 
that as soon as people wise up to the counters, he's just dead weight. And as we all know, professional players know the counters. And that is basically it, statistically, the five worst heroes in competitive Overwatch. These were five at the bottom of the barrel when it came to the pick rate in recent pro tournaments. This doesn't necessarily make them bad heroes in all levels of play, just at the very top in the current meta, which is, of course, subject to change in the future. All right, guys, that is going to do it for me here today as we recap five of the worst competitive heroes. Let me know what you guys think about this list. Let me know what you think about the video. I hope you all enjoyed it. Hope you have a good afternoon, and until next time, I'll see you later.